you want to get out and activate one of those more remote summits, might be a day walk away or maybe even an overnight walk, then you're going to be carrying a lot of stuff. Everything in your pack will be optimized for walking. So minimal size, minimal weight. Same with the radio transceiver. You're going to need something that is very compact, lightweight, but still has enough functions to guarantee that you'll get the contacts that you need. Something that you can just drop into the pack and hardly notice it's there. I call this project Summit Prowler 10 or SPX for short. It's a CW only transceiver, five watts, and it covers 40, 30, 20 and 15. And yes, it's nice and compact. It weighs 332 grams all up. But there's something different about this rig. That knob on the front, that's the volume control. So where's the tuning? Where's the display? Well, it doesn't have one. This rig is channelized. It has six channels with these corresponding LEDs across the front. This button cycles you through the channels and on any channel you can shift your frequency up or down slightly with these other buttons. So why build a pocket transceiver like this with no tuning? Well, it's possible and kind of makes sense because when you do a solder activation, you spot on a known frequency or a channel and the chasers come to you. So this rig is a bit of an experiment to try out channelized HF CW operation. Let's have a look under the covers. So I've removed the top board, which is the receiver board over, over here, to expose the lower board, and this is the transmitter board and the bandpass filters. This section here houses the transmitter, and the bandpass filters are across the top here. So as far as the transmitter is concerned, drive comes in and is squared up by this quad high-speed logic gate producing a 5 volt square wave and that goes straight on to the gates of these three BS170s. So this is a very standard 5 watt class E QRP transmitter arrangement. It's class E so it can do CW, it can't do a linear mode and it's pretty much identical to the class E PAs using BS170s as used in some of the Steve Weber transceivers, so the MTR5B and the Soda Pop, and also as used by Hans Summer in the QRP Labs QCX. So these three FETs see about 12 to 14 volts on their drain, and the drain voltage is switched via these components here under control from the Arduino, first to 2N7000, which then drives this device right in here. This is a P-channel FET and it just simply switches uh, 12 volts DC onto the drains of the three BS170s via this DC choke. On the output of the BS170s, there are two Zeners here. Uh, could have done that with one Zener, but I did not have the diode with the right rating, so I put to in series to get a bit over 50 volts. And that just stops any positive excursions exceeding 50 volts and getting too close to the ratings of the BS170's source drain junctions. So the RF then coupled through capacitors and then into one or the other of these two low pass filters. And they are selected again with some control lines and two N7000s driven by the Arduino one low pass filter for 40 and 30 and another low pass filter for 20 and 17. These are wound on these tiny little T30-6 toroids 
and, uh, and they produce quite a reasonable queue and perfectly adequate in terms of their power handling capacity for a little QRP rig like this. So then the bandpass filters spread around this part of the board. There are three, one, two, and three. I'll see if I can zoom in. So you can just see some of the components on the 40 meter bandpass filter here. These are two surface mount inductors, third one there, and surface mount capacitors. And they are switched with surface mount 2N7000 JFETs. Now let's try and get the receiver back in place and the receiver board sits on top of the transmitter board and as you can see it it's a plug-in and I won't push it all the way in but you can see that it simply mounts in there like that so let's zoom in on the receiver and have a quick look at it the signal from the bandpass filters comes into what is a SA612. It's right down there. Maybe I need to zoom in a bit further and see if I can pick up this. Yes, yeah, so there it is. There's the SA612. It's being hidden by this 470 ohm quarter watt resistor. And that's just a conventional receive mixer with the VFO being produced by clock zero of the SI5351. Its output is coupled via this transformer into a single stage first IF amplifier. It's the only IF amplifier. Then into the IF filter, which I made up with four megahertz crystals, so five poles. And uh, these four crystals, would I simply selected them for um, having very close resonant frequencies in a test oscillator and uh, didn't do anything more elaborate than that and they have resulted in quite a sharp filter. It's got a bandwidth of probably 250 hertz, so quite suitable for um, CW. So coming out of the filter, we're into the product detector. That's another SA612 there. And then into the audio stage, which is now audio, the product detector takes the BFO from clock two of the SI5351. So the next stage is a TLO72. It's a dual operational amplifier. The first op amp is an audio filter and the second op amp is an audio preamplifier with a gain of about five. And then the audio is applied and this is pretty much buried, but you can just see it in there, is applied to a TDA 2003, which is a mono audio amplifier capable of delivering about three to five watts so quite a quite a solid audio power amp and probably overkill for this application but uh, it's good to have a little bit of audio headroom up your sleeve so that is the receiver board in its entirety now the speaker has this space here reserved for it and it just mounts on these four standoffs here and the speaker is a is, is a miniature full range speaker which um, which has been available through local suppliers and uh, that just sits in there and uh, of course speakers do take up quite a bit of space in a compact rig so uh, it's a design challenge to work out how to house the speaker and and basically as you can see what I've done here I've bought the flow of the receiver right around the speaker. So the speaker really took pride of place, if you like, and um, that kind of addresses the problem of how do you fit speakers into these compact rigs. The way to do it is to make them the very first component that you place on the board and then just design around it. So the next thing I'll do is I'm going to prize the upper board off its, off its sockets, its mounting. And this is all easy enough to do, but just needs to be done with a little bit of care. And probably the best way is to get that screwdriver right in underneath the board 
and get a bit of leverage at the back. So there it comes, it's just popped up. So now I can lift that board and reveal the board underneath. So the board underneath is the baseboard and just bring this into view. So this board has on it the DC power socket, a 3.5 millimeter socket for the paddle and just a single push button there which drives the CW Kia's memory. Not too much on this board. There's a 12 volt DC regulator and a 5 volt DC regulator there. So power supply regulation and conditioning. And then bent over is the familiar SI5351 card. And that lower board is bolted with M2 hardware to the bottom mounting plate. And I need to do a little bit of alignment with care here, but that top board just pushes right on and pushes in. So the top board, let's bring it into focus. So the top board just houses an Arduino Nano and um, a few control lines. So diode switching there for the bandpass filter and low pass filters and a bit of side tone level setting and conditioning there. Oh, angle, well, angled aluminium bits, I should say. Yeah, aluminium angle. Okay, so there's one for the front, one for the back, two for the sides. And a base plate. And a base plate. Oh, yeah. very good. Make it any size you like. Pretty much. Yeah. Gee, it's little. It's lovely. See if it works on yeah. 20. Is it a one TM?
559 now. Mm, mm. About time, Gerard. Detailed schematics and a further description of how this project was designed and built are available on my blog.